Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. I'm sure everybody's ready for school, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's some adults out there. Anyway. Yes. All right. It's a good morning this morning. It's good to be together. Let's stand up and let us join in praising God this morning. Glory to God.
who is in charge of New Church Starts uh, and Church Revitalization, is going to be coming to the North District. He is going to be uh, visiting several churches around here, talking about New Church Starts, talking about ways in which uh, churches can um, revitalize themselves, uh, find new ministry areas. But one of the things that's also going to be attached to that is uh, bike riding. Lots of bike riding. Uh, Reverend Mathis loves uh, riding his bike, and so uh, one of the things that we'll be doing is uh, doing bike ride from church to church. So on one side of that sheet, it says meetings. Those are the meeting times and dates and locations, and on the other side, it says rides. Uh, those are bike rides. So if you would like to be a part of the bike ride, look on there, uh, find one you would like to do, and we'll uh, have all the arrangements set out. Now, I do need to say it is on a road with traffic. The road will not be shut down. You need to be experienced as a bike rider. If not, probably not the ride for you. But there is one listed on there at the Borman Trail in Longview. That is going to be a family ride. It is on a closed trail. Anybody and everybody, regardless of your age, can come out. It'll be a great time uh, to fellowship with other people from other churches, but also to hear about what the conference is doing as far as uh, looking at new churches and new faith communities. If you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll answer them as best I can. The other side of the sheet says St. Luke's MDO, Mother's Day Out. Uh, school is starting back, uh, not just um, 
for all of our bigger kids, but our MDO is starting back soon. And on there is kind of a wish list. Uh, Misty Shipman is our director, and she was hoping to get some involvement from the church, people who are willing to dedicate just a little bit of time uh, to help out. So if any of these spots interest you, mark on the sheet what you would be interested in doing. Put your name, your phone number, your email, and either stick that in the offering or hand it to me after the service, and I will be sure to get it to Misty, and, and she'll contact you after that. There are more announcements on the back of the bulletin. If you have any questions, grab me after the service, and I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, but now I would like to invite all of our teachers and our children uh, to come forward. And by teachers, I mean if you work in a school, if you work with children, I'm using the term very loosely. Uh, if you are with children, whether it's an MBO, a day school, uh, if you work in the cafeteria, if you're a teacher, huh? Sunday school, Sunday, see, I, like I said, I'm using the term very loosely. If you work with children, uh, if you are a child, if you are going back to school in any capacity, uh, we invite you to come forward now. It's, uh, for many, the day before school starts, the week before school starts, for some, school has already started back. Uh, so we are definitely getting in a time period where it is a great time to pray for everyone uh, working with children. Get out of the way. And I know we've got some retired teachers out there who are very thankful and uh, happy to be sitting <laughs> on this side. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. We can pray for them and see. So, that works. So one thing I would like to point out as we talk about uh, being dedicated in the lives of children and trying to raise children up, uh, not only do we do that here at the church, but each and every person up here has a huge impact in the life and the community uh, and the communities around us. So for that, I am immensely grateful. Uh, but we would like to say a prayer for you this morning. For all of you sitting out there, I invite you to join with me. For all of you up here, I invite you just to take it in, to soak it up, uh, to feel God's presence this morning. So let us pray. God, we are grateful for this time of year, for this time of new starts, God, for this time of going back. God, we lift up each and every one of our students this morning, knowing that for some they've already started, for some they're about to start, but God, knowing that it's exciting and it's energizing and it's scary all at the same time. So God, know that you are going with each and every one of them that you're helping them, that you're giving them the knowledge they need to go forward and to learn, that you're helping them to be kind and compassionate with everyone they encounter, God, that even in the most difficult times when they feel like they just can't learn it, God, or it's hard, that you're there with them. God, we also lift up each and every one of these teachers, knowing, God, that they are touching children's lives. They are impacting everyone they encounter, God. And so we ask that you give them the strength, the hope, the encouragement to go out and to not just teach, God, but to, to pour your love and your care so that anyone they encounter might feel that. So that the children they are with know your deep and abiding love. God, we pray for strength for everyone gathered up here, that uh, early mornings and later evenings do not avail, God, but to know that your strength is being poured out in their lives, that your patience is coming forth, God, and that you are leading and guiding us in the year ahead. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So I know if you'll stand here for a second. For all of the teachers, we've got a little gift, and for all of the students and teachers, if you want to... A little bag tag. We've got one for you. You want a bag tag? You want a bag
children, I invite you to go ahead and stay up here for children's time. Parents, you're more than welcome to stay up here for children's time if you want. But if not, you're more than welcome to sit down. Dear God, please bless us as we start our new adventure at school and Sunday school. And help us to learn about earthly facts and also to learn your holy word. In your name, amen. So yesterday we had a church work day, and I would like to start off by saying thank you to everybody that came out and helped with the church work day. Uh, we started at 6 a.m. There were significantly more people here at 6 a.m. than I would have thought on a Saturday. Uh, but if you came out and helped, uh, thank you. We were able to get a whole lot done. And I learned a couple of things yesterday. Yesterday was a great work day. Uh, I'd never laid sod before. Now I know how to lay sod. Uh, but one thing with me and physical labor is I actually like working outside. I like doing physical labor. I don't do a lot of that with my job. There's not a whole lot required to be a pastor. You don't have to uh, do a lot of very physically demanding things. So I like doing it. But the other catch to that is I don't typically know what I'm doing. Right? I don't do it a whole lot, whatever it is, which means I know how to use tools. I know rudimentary things. But I don't entirely know everything to complete the project. I am at the whim of whoever is in charge. You tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. So yesterday, one of the projects we had to work on was removing carpet and glue from the steps of the educational building right out here. 
the, the troop guard had kind of come off, and it was becoming unsafe, and we're trying to figure out what to do. And so I was given by one of our more experienced trustees some uh, heavy-duty scrapers, some uh, glue remover, and I was told to go get the carpet and glue on. Seems straightforward. How hard can this be? I mean, physically demanding, but how hard? Most of the, uh, the, the carpet was already gone, so all I had to do was go and lay this glue remover on, lay it on really thick, let it soak for a couple of minutes, and then I take that scraper and I start scraping, right? The glue remover does its job, or at least it's supposed to, and all I have to do is a quick scrape, and it'll be good. Two hours later, the upside is we have step number one done. Like, one-tenth of the space is covered. It, it meant we had to lay the glue remover and scrape, and lay the glue remover and scrape, and me and a couple of other guys are trying to find any way we can to expedite this process. So, while we're working on the bottom step with flammable glue remover, one of the guys goes and gets a blowtorch and takes it to the adhesive a couple of steps up, because that seemed like a good idea at the time, to see if we could burn it off. It didn't work that well. Didn't burn the church down either. Or like the, adhesive, uh, the, the glue remover on fire. That didn't work. So then we tried a, a circular grinder to see if that would work. Needless to say, the only way to get this adhesive off is with a whole lot of elbow grease. So two hours into this project, we get the bottom step looking great. The bottom step is completely done. We're working on step number two, letting the glue remover soak on step number three. And the most experienced of our trustees walks up. And he stands there for a minute. And he goes, that bottom step looks really good. Well, thank you. But you know, I think we can probably just uh, take some paint and just cover all over all of it, and you don't even need to worry about uh, taking off any more of the rest of it. <laughs> Two and a half hours into this project is when you decide to tell me that everything I just did, while it looks wonderful, was a complete and utter waste of time. Thank you for that. Right? Thank you. But it goes back to step number one that I told you about, or fact number one with me and physical labor, and it's something I've been working on all week. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to physical labor, and I will do whatever I am told. I was told to take the adhesive off, so I did. And then someone a lot wiser, a lot smarter comes along and has a far better plan. If yesterday taught me anything, it's A, I can remove a lot of glue with a paint scraper, and B, it matters in life who you listen to. It matters in life who is offering up advice, who is offering up suggestions, who is offering up wisdom. It matters who you listen to. Over this last couple of weeks, we've been talking about wisdom. Right? Where wisdom comes from, how we get wisdom, how do we find wisdom, and the idea that wisdom is simply knowing and listening to God. It's by knowing God and by listening to God that God is able to speak in our lives, and that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is not having all of the information. Wisdom is not knowing all the correct steps. Wisdom is simply trusting that the God you have placed your faith in is the God that's leading you. And so we looked at that. We looked at knowing God. We talked about listening to God. And today we're going to look at you know, other ways of listening. Right? What if God doesn't just speak to you in those moments of discernment? What if God is speaking through others around you? When Jesus is challenged with the greatest commandment, the lawyer comes up to him and, and Jesus responds and says, The first and the greatest commandment is... There we go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That is knowing God, right? If you pour everything you have into God, God pours everything he has into you. That is that first step of knowing God. And Jesus says this is the first and the greatest, but there is another one like it, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says on this, everything else hangs. All of the laws, all the prophets. This is what matters. So that first part is, is loving God, and that second part is loving your neighbor, right? But, but there's a balance to this, right? Because it says, love your neighbor as yourself. So I always think of it as kind of like a seesaw, right? You have self on one side and neighbor on the other, and, and it kind of balances back and forth. 
right? Because it's not just love your neighbor. It's treat your neighbor how you want to be treated. That's what it breaks down into. So if you want someone to treat you in this way, then certainly treat them the way you wish they would treat you. Right? It, you listen to yourself. Why not listen to some of your neighbors? The understanding is that God doesn't just speak to you. God speaks through those around you. And so Jesus is, is immediately challenging us with, you can't just love God. You've got to love everybody. You've got to listen to everybody, which means if you are trying to do life alone, if you are trying to do it by yourself, it's not going to work. It's not. You've got to have people around you. You've got to have a community of people that believe in you, that push you, that challenge you, that help you with struggles. That's why we come to church on Sunday. It's not just about hearing a sermon. You can do that on TV. It is about being in community. It is about pouring into your neighbors the same way they pour into you, which means you are going to have people around you. We're going to be surrounded by people. The bigger challenge is who are you listening to? How are you listening to people? This is one of the biggest challenges we face as school starts back, right? Who are you listening to? Are your kids listening to people that are going to make good choices or bad choices? Are your kids falling in with the crowd that you want them to or not, right? And even you, think about your life when it comes to work and everything outside of church. What are the voices you listen to? Are they voices of status quo? Are they voices that tell you you've done enough, you're good enough, don't worry about it, that don't push you, that don't challenge you? Or is it a voice that challenges you always to do better? A voice that pushes you. Several studies have been done from school-age kids all the way to adults. And what they have discovered is that children, their best friend, they will score roughly the same grades as their best friend. They'll be in the same ballpark. It's not perfect and it's not exact, but for the most part, they score in the same area. Adults, you're not off the hook either. Your best friend, statistically speaking, you probably make plus or minus 10% of their salary. Who we hang out with matters. Because who we hang out with either holds us where we're at or pushes us forward into this new and this great place. Wisdom comes from those around us. So this morning we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 10. And I'm going to recap the first portion of this. So when chapter 10 picks up, Solomon has died. Solomon is the wisest of all of them. Solomon ruled the kingdom and was a great leader. He had wisdom, not because he had all of the information, but because he listened to God. He was able to rule. He was able to be fair and just. He was able to keep this fragile kingdom together because of the wisdom he had. But he's passed away. And so his son, Rehoboam, is now taking over. And in fact, when we pick up in chapter 10, Rehoboam is going up to Shechem for coronation. Rehoboam has not been made king yet. He is on his way there. And while he is at Shechem, right as they're about to put the crown on his head, this other man shows up by the name of Jeroboam. I really wish they would have picked different names. It would have made retelling the story easier. But, but Rehoboam is about to be crowned. Jeroboam shows up, and Jeroboam comes to him and says, Look, your father was a little bit harsher than we felt he needed to be. Your father uh, ruled with a little bit of a, a, a tight grip. Um, would you reconsider the way you oversee the kingdom? Right? Instead of the harshness, how about you show a little bit of mercy? So that is what Jeroboam comes to him and asks. Rehoboam stops the coronation and says, you know what? This is an important question. And so he asks for three days. He says, give me three days. Let me have time. That's what we talked about last week, creating that time for discernment, having time to be able to listen to where God is speaking. So it seems like the story is going in a great way, right? Rehoboam says, let me stop and think on this. This is a huge decision. But Rehoboam doesn't want to make it alone, so he goes, and there's two different groups of people. There is his father Solomon's council, and he goes to them, and he says, what should we do? 
How should we act? What, what should I do with these people? Now remember, these are Solomon's advisors, the wisest person there was. His advisors are sitting here. Solomon knew he couldn't do it alone. Solomon knew wisdom came from not tackling it by himself, but by having wise people around him. And so even though Solomon is gone, his advisors are still here, the ones who help lead and guide. And so Rehoboam goes to him and he says, what should we do? And they go, you know what? Maybe you should try being nice. Right? Maybe if you are nice to them, maybe if you do show them mercy and grace, then they'll love you. And because they love you, they'll be your servants forever. So loosen up a little bit. Rehoboam listens, and he says, all right. And then he goes to this other group, this group of his friends, this group of people he has been around all of his life. And he says, what do you think I should do? Right, so he's got the wise ones on one side, he's got Solomon's advisors on one side, and this other untried group. So his friends come up to him and they say, you know what you should do? You should tell him, you thought it was bad under your father? It's going to be worse under me. Right? If you think it was awful the way he treated you, you never should have come to complain because now it is even worse. Worse, right? So the story starts off great. Rehoboam realizes there's this huge monumental moment. Status quo has the ability to be changed. Status quo was keeping them pushed down. And so Rehoboam knows that this is a moment to make a great change. He asks for time for discernment. And even better, he asks wise people what their thoughts are. Then he goes the other direction. Remember last week, wise people see danger, simple people run headlong into it, right? He's standing at that pathway. He's got people pulling him in both directions. And so that's where we pick up in verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had said, Come to me again the third day. The king answered them harshly. King Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men. He spoke to them in accordance with the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people because it was a turn of affairs brought about by God so that the Lord might fulfill his word, which he had spoken by Ahaj the Shalonite to Jeroboam son of Nebat. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Rehoboam, from that day on, never led the United Kingdom. In that moment, when he said those words, when he said, I will make it even harder for you, the entire kingdom, which had been ruled by his father for generations, who had been ruled by his grandfather for generations, the entire kingdom goes into civil war. And Rehoboam never again is able to lead effectively. In one moment, he has this opportunity to make great change. He has this opportunity to be wise beyond his years. He has this opportunity to step forward. And yet he decides to not listen to the wise ones, but listen to others. And when he does that, it has disastrous Rehoboam is this perfect example of who you listen to matters. Right? Who we keep around us in life matters. Because you see, are they speaking hope and peace and good news into your life? Are they speaking God calling you forward? Or are they trying to get you to stay where you're at? Are they calling in arrogance and pride? So you can immediately gather that the wise men and, and the other men, it's not necessarily about their age, right? It's not just because the wise men are older and the young men are young. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with how they viewed these people. Again, remember, love your neighbor as yourself, right? And impose that on to the wisdom of the old men where they say, you know what? If you love these people, they're going to love you back. Give them the opportunity to grow. Give them the opportunity to step forward. Empower them, right? We can see Jesus challenging us with that. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? The wise men could have simply said, how would you want to be treated? Would you want to be whipped and beaten and pushed around? Or would you want a little mercy and grace? And the young men simply say, it doesn't matter how you treat the people. They have to do what you say. 
So we see this come directly in. We see Jesus' words of love your neighbor as yourself, not just about the friends speaking in or the counselor speaking into his life, but also how he treated those people around him. And you can see that he had this moment of greatness, and because of who he listened to, he stepped backwards. God speaks into our life through those we keep around us. Who is it that you're listening to? Who is it that you have around you? Are they people who are challenging you to do better? Are they people who are challenging you to love your neighbor as yourself? Are they people who are pushing you to grow into a deeper faith with God? Are they people who are simply making you feel good exactly where you are at in this moment? You see, our faith, our church, our God is not about status quo. Status quo is never good enough because God is always calling us forward. Rehoboam had this opportunity to step forward into where God was leading him, but he chose not to listen. You see, yesterday I had this amazing opportunity before the project ever started to go up and to ask the person who knew what they were doing what I should do with these steps. I had this amazing opportunity to go up and to take two and a half hours of my time that could have been used somewhere else and get the wisdom there in the beginning. But I didn't. Right? I thought that listening to the other people who had just as much experience as I did I had the right idea. Where are those people in your life that you're listening to that are keeping you where you're at? Do we have those people in our lives that are like his young friends that are challenging us to do things that you know God is not calling us to? And where are those people in your life challenging you to greater things. Wisdom comes through those who we keep around us, through those who we listen to. So as this new school year starts, as everything gets back into the swing and gets going, I encourage you, pay attention to who you listen to, to who you keep around you. Because God doesn't just speak to you, God speaks through others. God calls us for it. So I encourage you, find God in others. Find God's wisdom as it's spoken into your life. Remember Rehoboam, listening to the wrong people and going backwards. Find God's wisdom and listen to it. Let us pray. God, this morning we come before you seeking your wisdom in our lives, seeking your wisdom in the lives of others, God, and seeking to find those who are calling us forward, those who are pushing us to do better, those who are leading us into wisdom, God. Help us to see those that aren't, to not listen to those voices, God, to not let those voices speak loudly and clearly in our lives. It's in your name we pray. Amen. This morning we have heard the word of God. We have lifted up our prayers to God. And so I now invite you to respond with your tithes and offerings as the ushers come forward. God, we ask you to take these gifts, to bless them and use them for the building of your kingdom.
we come to our last song, if you are looking for a place to call home, if you are looking for a group of friends to speak wisdom in your life, if you would like St. Luke's to be that place, I invite you to either come forward as we stand and sing or to meet me in the back after the service. But I invite you to stand and join together with me. Thank you. 